Sorry to do this to you, but yes, part three of the comparison of the Gerber 600 versus the Leatherman Charge Series. We ended by talking about versatility, and I could go on about how I think the Charge is a much more versatile multi-tool than the 600, and I talked to, uh, to the blades in part three, how they're bigger, easier to deploy, and therefore more versatile. And I talked about the tool bit capabilities between the two multi-tools as well. Now, to be fair, the 600, if that's what you have, I'm sure you'd probably be happy with it. What we're talking about here are preferences. You know, I can go to point A to B in a Volkswagen Bug, and I can go from uh, A to B in, I don't know, a Corvette Z06. Two different cars. They serve the same function, just like these two multi-tools do. However, one might be funner to use than the other. Maybe that's a lame example, but that's all I can come up with right now. The point being is that there is an enjoyment factor and ease of use, and we enjoy the toughness and versatility of the multi-tool as we engage it in our daily tasks. And I think on every level, the Leatherman Charge Series is superior to the current Gerber 600, at least this one. And I know Gerber makes a lot of different multi-tools, and this may be an unfair comparison but this is our standard of measure, at least mine, and so it behooves us. This is a full-size multi-tool, and so they're in the same fighting category. They're the same categories. Heavyweight going against heavyweight, so there's no unfairness here, I think, in comparing the two, really. So that's versatility. I'm going to talk like not anymore on that. You get the point. Let's talk about the carry case. First, we'll start with the Gerber 600 carry case, and here it is. Anything wrong with it? No, not really. It's a standard carry case. Cambrel lined, not too bad. So put the multi-tool in here. The bits go like that. And again, they have that silly rubber holder, so they're not easy to slide in or out. Some of you may think that's good. I think it's bad. I think it's a hassle. Every time I have to take a bit out, I'm struggling to do it and struggling to put it back in the sheath, but that's an aside. So there's a Gerber. Now downsides to this, and there are several. One is it cannot be carried horizontally, just vertically. That's all the strap you've got right there. Hope you like it. That's what you got, unless you equip this with a different tactical pouch of some sort. Also notice there's no cutout at the bottom, so we can carry the pliers in an open configuration. Hmm, not good. Now let's look at the charge. Okay, here's where the tool bits go. Again, they're flat, hard plastic, non-grippy. They slide in easy, and they chose to use elastic to retain the bits. So they're not coming out. They're not going anywhere. They're fine, and it's a dedicated elastic pouch. Multi-tool goes in. Bam, done. Again, it's more compact, much more compact. Look at the size difference, both in height, and even in width, because you've got those full-size three-dimensional bits with its goofy adapter on the Gerber. So, how you doing? That makes for a bigger carry package. Something that will bump into stuff more. But, back to the sheaths. That's, let's look at the attachment method for the Leatherman. On the left-hand side, you see, hey, we got a vertical carry option. Oh, and we can slide a belt in here or a horizontal carry option. Granted, it can't be like a military web belt, but at least they did something. That's cool. This is a really good multi-tool sheath, if you ask me. And it gets better. Like I showed you in part one or two, I forget. When we open the multi-tool up, put it in the pouch lock so, what do you know? There's a hole there, so we can carry it in an open configuration to mend those fences on the back 40. Not too bad. Gerber does not have that option. So, the sheath wins with the charge once again. So, that's the carry case. Now we're going to get to a very subjective area, which I term quality slash feel. How do they feel? Now, we own knives and multi-tools, yes, for our daily tasks, but truth be told, we also own them for their intri intrinsic enjoyment they give us. We like tools, and we like the feel um, or the quality that they give us or provide us. At least I do. And let's talk to that. It's, again, kind of an intangible 
thing we're talking about here. It's how does it feel to you? You know, do you dig it? That's what we're talking about. The Gerber 600, as I handle it, I do not dig it. I will not lie to you. It feels flimsy. It just feels rickety to me. That doesn't mean it is rickety. We've proven, or at least we've talked to that in previous segments, but I'm talking just feel. In, you hear that? It's just rickety. It's not good. It's kind of like a car door that does not close solidly. That's a Gerber 600, at least to me. You know, as I pull it, if I wiggle the pliers, there's a lot of play here. Side to side in the handles. You hear it? I do. You know, as I deploy the blades, do they lock up solidly with a nice snap? No. Silently. You know, I want to feel a snap. Now, this kind of gets to the marketing of a multi-tool. But there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, give us a multi-tool that we dig and that we have confidence in. That's not to say this won't perform well. Although this part's plastic here. How long will that last? You know, what if I'm using this multi-tool in 20 degrees below zero? Is this plastic part going to bust off on me? I've seen it. I've lived in North Dakota before and I've seen temperatures like that and any plastic part portion of things gets so brittle it just shatters. I've seen it. But back to the feel and quality. The knife blade doesn't lock with a, you know, a nice snap. Um, it just, I don't know, i just not digging it. So, now, that doesn't mean that the 600 is a piece of crap, don't get me wrong. It's still a quality multi-tool, but what we are comparing it against is this. Our standard of measure, the Leatherman Charge. So as I deploy the blade here, hear that? Hmm. Let's try the other side. Serrated blade. Nice snick. Standard locking liner here. Just very nice. Any play? None at all. How about this, this file out here? Also locks nicely with a nice snap. No wiggle, no movement, no side to side. We deploy the pliers. You hear anything in the charge? Anything. Nothing. And I've used this one a lot. So it's not a new one. Doesn't wiggle. There's no movement at all. Very stiff in its main pivot bushing, which I like. Very close tolerances on the pliers. All the tools come out. All metal, by the way. Do you see any plastic on this one? Nope all metal so go ahead and break it out use it in 20 below zero it ain't gonna fail huh hear that nice snap that's what I want a multi-tool to do is give me confidence that it's not gonna let me down okay so the Gerber 600 fails me on that count and again this is an intangible thing but it gets to the enjoyment factor of using a tool and maybe you're using this day in and day out you know, it's there's some the little things like that. Don't underestimate them. Every time you pop that blade open on a charge, you hear that you you won't even be thinking about it, but you're gonna dig it. You're just gonna go, yeah, my buddy's here, my multi tool's here to help me out, as opposed to I'm kind of being ridiculous with this, but you get the point. You know, yeah, it'll function. Don't get me wrong. The 600 is not a horrible multi-tool. It's just inferior to this. So quality and feel, I could go on and on. I don't want to bore you guys. I only got a minute to go anyhow. Charge is superior. How about price? Now, let's be honest. This is a cheaper multi-tool. About half the cost of the charge. But nevertheless, don't say, hey, oh, you can't compare them because the price is different. Well, it's still a full-size multi-tool. This is still a standard measure. I still will maintain it's a fair comparison, even though this is a, le a lesser price multi-tool. And I know that there's different offerings that Gerber have, and they may compare. By the way, this one has scissors, and this one doesn't. That gets to the versatility. More versatile. Running out of time. Let's summarize real quick. And again, that's in our survival vest. You'll see it again. So basically in every category, the Chark TI wins size, weight, ease of use, comfort, toughness, versatility, carry case, quality, feel, price. Okay, not price. It loses in that. This is a kind of a pricier multi-tool, but like a lot of things in life, you're going to get what you pay for. Gerber 600 multiplier. I do not like it for the reasons I've told you. I would never buy it. Out!